You're tuned in to Reimagine 2021, version 11, the number one virtual crypto and blockchain conference. In this segment, our guest speakers talk about how NFTs are helping the general adoption of cryptocurrency. What's NFTs impact on adoption? Well, okay, so let's break it down. What are NFTs impact on the adoption of crypto, right? What is an NFT at the end of the day? A dollar bill is guaranteed unique because it's got a serial number on it that is guaranteed by the Federal Reserve Bank to give the bearer, bearer is the operative word, certain rights, okay, as a dollar bill. And, it, and it's illegal to try to replicate that. So the rep, the Inability to replicate it comes through law and now through a little bit of technology because they make it hard to put it through a photocopier and things like that. Think of an NFT or a non-fungible token, like a dollar is fungible because my dollar should be the same as your dollar. We could swap them and we can both go buy the same things with the dollars that we just swapped, okay, in theory. You can't do that with a Picasso versus a Rembrandt. They're not the same value, right? They're not fungible for each other. Okay, so an NFT in the digital sense is like the Picasso versus the Rembrandt idea. Now, each NFT is, is some software code that has the equivalent of that serial number in it that the dollar bill has that makes it unique to the bearer or the owner of that NFT. Why is that important? Because now you can digitally represent your ownership to anything. Anything. We talk about collectibles, we talk about JPEGs, we talk about you know, N uh, NBA top shots and the equivalent tops baseball cards, but it could be anything. It could be my Bitcoin shoes, it could be the painting on your wall, it could be a specific seat in a concert venue, it could be a bunch of Bitcoin that you put in a basket. Anything. And the bearer of that token is the person who can prove depending on how the token was created, that they own the right to that underlying asset, whether it's a JPEG in the digital sense or a physical object or, again, the movie seat. That changes everything. We've never had the ability to prove di digital ownership before. You know, is there anything that Abra sees down the line that's going to be involved in NFTs down the road? Oh, absolutely. Look, I mean, crypto ownership is a, a, a big umbrella. Right, and is in the in the umbrella and the tent that that it's over, uh, are growing, like astronomically, right? And so we're constantly looking at what our customers want to own, how they want to hold it, how they want to use it, and interoperate with the real world and with our, you know, other partners in the space. And I promise you that will include NFTs. It will continue to include DeFi. Mm -hmm. It will include gaming. Um, et cetera, et cetera, down, down the line as we go. I think NFTs have had an incredible impact on adoption. Uh, really it the nft thing didn't really click to me until actually i was at btc miami oh, wow. and i had a conversation with an artist and she had just you know she was presenting an nft collection and she kind of broke down a little bit of like how the art world works a little bit i knew you know i'm an art fan but the behind the scenes you know there's a lot of uh, uh opaqueness about the industry right the artist usually works you know with uh, some type of broker they do an art show or they you know have a showing in, at a gallery uh, that gallery ends up taking upwards of like 50% of yeah. the of the actual you know sale in the art and they also heard that sometimes the sale price is inflated and the artist doesn't even know so if you have a piece of art that sells for you know 10 grand um, the artist may think it sold for 10 grand but it actually sold you know in in the in the um, gallery for 12 5 you know, so, and they, they won't actually give the rest to, to the artist. And, and so there's really not a lot of transparency in that. So when she broke that down and said how NFTs have really helped her uh, both, you know, direct connection with her fans um, and then also introducing more transparency in, in uh, how they're, you know, bought and sold, uh, you know, what the price was, there's more price discovery on the actual art. Um, it kind of totally clicked to me. And that's just for art. 
right? You can extrapolate that out to music, to other entertainment. And I think the entertainment use cases are kind of the tip of the sword for NFTs. Um, you know, NFTs can have a massive impact on just traditional IP, you know, software licenses, uh, trademarks, uh, you know, actual, um, you know, patents. Yeah. I mean, these are old industries. The patent industry is so old, and going, I, you know, I hold a patent, and and going through that process was painful. And you have to work with all these patent attorneys and IP attorneys, and uh, you know where you know it, just to just to make sure that you're the patent holder and that you have you know rights to that um, issuing that as an nft you know you potentially have you know those similar rights there's obviously a lot of like how do you enforce that and everything else but um, you know the beauty and we can talk about this more later about like in, in the DAOs, but you know there, there's definitely a fine line between uh, the, the legal world and the cryptography world, right? They're both laws enforced by different things, so. Wow, interesting, yeah, and I think, out, so the art, that's obviously been real big. Um, in the NFT space, we have, you know, CryptoPunks, you know, Bored Apes, and, and all these other, other collectibles. Um, how do you see kind of the, um, you know, you can buy it by the floor, in, in fractionalization, how do you kind of see that providing inclusivity, I guess, for others and being able to have access to like uh, someone's art, art piece? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's interesting, like Board Ape, Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, in terms of like NFTs and, and providing more uh, uh, inclusiveness. Um, you know, yacht clubs traditionally are the most exclusive you know organizations on the planet, right? You pay membership, and that membership is restricted and voted in by a committee. Um, the uh, the cool thing about what Board Ape the Yacht Club did was when you buy the NFT, you become a member of this, you know, digital community, right? And that NFT gives you kind of access to that. Um, now, with the, the rise in prices from these NFTs, it actually becomes more exclusive, right? So you can't afford to buy an NFT, so therefore you cannot become a member. So there's been some really cool projects. I think one is called uh, Party Dow that actually fractionalizes, you know, so that a whole group of people can go out and buy a uh, million dollar NFT, uh, which I think is an amazing, you know, project. And, and that's really kind of encapsulates both the DAO structure and the NFT structure and kind of marries them together in a really interesting way. The reason I think you're seeing so many different areas in crypto is because it, it is like the internet. You know, it, in, the, in, the, in the late 90s, people had this thought that there were a class of companies that were internet companies and everything else was separate. And that's not true. As we found out, everything is an internet company eventually, right? And I think everything will become a crypto company eventually across various different types of use cases. And you mentioned many of them. NFTs, I think, are one of the most interesting things in crypto because they're truly, they're truly a new thing, right? Where, and I think an NFT itself, there's a whole lot of debate because people classify them differently. I think there's NFTs that are more like art. I think that are, there are NFTs that are more like uh, classic sort of sports memorabilia collectibles. And I think there's NFTs that are more like fast fashion. Right? And I think that they, they fulfill all of those different roles. And, and the, but, the, but the thing that's very, very different about it is it's a digital asset that you can own, prove that you own it, and you can move it around. And, and the, you know, the example people use is you can play a game, you can win some sort of thing in the game, sword, armor, or whatever, uh, and, and you can keep it, right? Like my kid plays Fortnite. He, you know, he spends a lot of money buying various things on Fortnite. There's no value in what he buys outside of Fortnite. But if, if what they did was if someone created Fortnite using NFTs, then he could actually take that out of the game. He could do other things with it, et cetera. And so I see the value in NFTs, and I think it's going to be one of the most interesting areas of innovation in crypto. It's clear that NFTs have inspired a whole new class of, of interest and adoption in public blockchain networks. And I think it's because it's less nerd stuff. It's more culture, it's art, it's music, it's gaming. And, and these are things that people are passionate about to begin with. And I think, to be honest, a lot of people have been frustrated about it for a long time as well. And so the big unlock of NFT is that it allows economic participation in new forms of culture. And, and that's like chocolate and peanut butter coming together. It's a new flavor sensation. So um, my view is we're just it's still at the leading edge of NFTs. Um, and and that there's just so much pent up demand and interest to own digital representations of, of 
of culture, of, of substance, of value. It could be art, it could be in-game assets, it could be highlights from sports clips. That's not hard for people to understand. Um, they say, oh, to do so, you gotta jump through some new hoops. Fine, I'll jump through, jump through some new hoops to do so. But, but the why, I don't think, is particularly difficult for people to wrap their minds around. So I think it will accelerate adoption a lot more than, than the financial aspect. I think the people who were interested in the finance sort of saw Bitcoin, they saw the altcoins, they saw Ethereum, and they saw DeFi, and they, they sort of came in with the interest of finance. And now you have this other um, sort of spectrum of people who are interested in the other sides of the, of the culture, of the interaction, of the gaming, of the art, of whatever it is. And so now sort of those people are coming into crypto and saying, oh my God, this is really valuable. And wow, this, this DeFi stuff is also very interesting. So it's, it's this funnel of adoption. Which is crazy, I think. And I've been thinking about it because it, it, we don't know what the use cases are and they're still coming out. And we do know some, right? We're, we're tackling a bunch. Um, and how do you envision NFT's use case? You're kind of touching on it a little bit with, with the artist side. You know, I've, I've talked about uh, some of the, the, the collectible side. Some people are tokenizing real estate, right? Um, what, how do you envision uh, gaming? So how do you envision uh, NFT's uh, use case? Yeah, so there are, it's an incredible amount of use cases. Um, but how I view NFTs, are these are keys um, that, that have some design on them, um, but ultimately they give you access to something. And I think people will realize sort of, oh wow, it's more than just an image or something like this. This is actually a key to unlock some group or, or game or whatever it is. It's, it, it is a key, it's a badge to say, hey, you did this thing, and whether that's a real world experiment, like a, like a po-op, like, hey, you were here, and so here's your NFT, and we can verify that you were here. Or it's, you know, um, a crypto punk being, hey, you were early in, or, you know, hey, you paid a lot of money. Sort of, even now, if you buy in, it's a clear sign of, hey, you know, I have this wealth, and I'm buying in, and I'm making the stand up. I'm very interested in this. So there are so many aspects where this can sort of be communicated and, and use cases. Um, but I think we're just scratching the surface, and there's, there's an incredible amount of creativity going on, especially because these are artists kind of building with these building blocks that we've, that we've been building up. And, and I think those building blocks of these NFTs will start moving into DeFi as they say, hey, can we sort of plug this into the existing uh, system you have here? And this is going to create an explosion of interest. I think for one, they're much more approachable than some of the other things we talk about with Bitcoin, which are very fundamental and important but it's much more, you know, people have collect, been collecting baseball cards for probably a long time now, and it's, it's pretty um, intuitive, I think, what's, in some sense, what's happening with NFTs. And, and that kind of goes back to, like, DeFi and DAOs, which we'll get into, where these are different use cases playing out for different types of people. And you kind of touched on it. I think the TVL in DeFi um, is larger than, you know, NFTs, the market, but that's slowly changing. But why do you think NFTs were more, main, more mainstream? Well, to be interested in NFTs, you just have to be in a community that has them, and then you're like, oh, this is cool. I'm, I'm kind of into this now. It's, it's, um, it's a very straightforward path from being in a community to thinking about digital ownership. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we say things like TVL, you gotta read some things before you know what's going on there. Do NFTs matter? And what are your thoughts around NFTs? Yeah, I mean, what a year that NFTs have had, right? I would say that NFTs matter immensely, not just because they brought this brand new set of users to crypto. Um, and it's interesting to see that the NFT community is actually very different than the crypto community, right? I'll we'll touch on that a little bit later, but I think it's immensely valuable for crypto because it brings another model of blockchain's benefits to a larger user base, right? Everyone thinks about blockchain as a platform, as secure, decentralized, immutable, but not enough talk about the assets on top of it being secure, decentralized, immutable, user-owned, et cetera, right? And I think that's what really NFTs captured for the first time. It's not easy to explain to someone, hey, this magical internet money in your wallet belongs to you and only you, right? Because someone will see another wallet with that exact same cryptocurrency and be like, hey, you know, it, it looks more fungible than it is. It, it is fungible by that respect, right? Um, but for an NFT, this is something that may only show up in your wallet, right? And that kind of 
it's like a simple understanding psychological barrier is broken with NFTs, whereas with cryptocurrencies, it's still a little hard to imagine, right? Um, so NFTs have really brought this new method of defining what a digital asset means, right? Of course, it's gone through its JPEG, GIF, and you know, still image phase and some animations, uh, but I really think there's huge opportunity to designate digital files, whether it's a 3D CAD file, or it's a video file you've created, or it's a photograph, right? Um, these different types of forms of digital creations represented as NFTs, uh, there's a huge secondary market for what you can tie to these NFTs from the form of royalties, intellectual property rights, et cetera, right? So we're just scratching the surface. I think arts and collectibles was the perfect use case to kick things off with. And now we're diving into some really, really interesting stuff uh, about intelligent NFTs, uh, AI mixed with NFTs. Um, NFTs are now a foundation on top of which to intersect with other technologies. And that's really what the exciting part is. Yeah, I kind of generally think of NFT as like a gateway drug for crypto. Uh, it's just like, you know, if you look at something like penguin or like some cute, like, I don't know, cat uh, NFT, like you're not really thinking about blockchain or crypto, right? It's like, oh, that's kind of cute. Oh, but then it happens to actually make you money. Like, that's great. Um, so I think it actually gets, that's how a lot of people get into NFTs, especially the new people. Um, yes, yeah, so I think it's like a kind of new uh, you know, gateway drug for crypto. For those people who've been watching the space closely, I, I've been working full time since 2017 in, in blockchain and crypto. We've all been waiting for the killer application to come. And I think the infrastructure was built, really these are the highways. Now we need the cars and the passengers. And um, DeFi uh, created a huge surge of value and new users into the space and actual real usage. NFTs now, which I have to say, I think this snuck up on a lot of people, even people who are experts who've been in the space for a while. NFTs now are the killer use case, the killer app that's going to bring not just the next million daily active users, but 100 million daily active users. Exactly, and I think the early days, there was some uh, congestion on the network. Um, you know, infrastructure maybe wasn't there, the L1s. W give us a little bit about scale. I know people can go back to our old videos, but for this segment, give me like a little two minute uh, spiel on, on Scale Labs um, and what you guys are working on, because I want to tie that into how you guys are actually building out some tooling, some infrastructure uh, that allow you know, this NFTs to really blossom even more. Yeah, so Scale is a multi-chain network. What this means is there's many, many blockchains that can run in the Scale network. The other key component is that it's Ethereum native. It's built with Ethereum. It's integrated to Ethereum. And so if you build something on Ethereum, it can run on Scale really fast. And so why that's valuable is uh, uh, when you think about all the new users, all the use cases for NFTs, DeFi, Web3, uh, et cetera, social tokens, um, B2B applications, we need a lot of blockchains that can help this work, but you need also pooled security and you need connection into the Ethereum ecosystem, okay? Developer tools and the different software products and wallets, almost all of them that are getting big use are built into the Ethereum ecosystem. So Scale is able to plug into that world and help the Ethereum ecosystem grow exponentially. In your view, is this the technological revolution or the cultural revolution with NFTs? I think it's both, but first and foremost, a cultural revolution. Uh, I personally was never really interested in crypto before. I thought that, you know, I, I looked at DeFi, I invested in crypt, uh, some crypto early on, but I was never obsessed with the space. And it was only until I NFTs came about and I really saw the amazing things that this could be doing, not just for artists, right? For brands, for communities, for everyone involved. I feel like it's the right way to market something. I feel like it's the right way to create connections between creators and communities. And I think ultimately entertainment is what the world focuses on. Um, I think a company can make a lot of money. Something can be really interesting, but the value comes from the storytelling aspect and the cultural aspect. And I think that's why, you know, NFT New York this week, it's so crazy because so many people are fascinated by what NFTs can do and the different stories that can be told around the different NFT communities. And that's something that I feel like was missing in the crypto space more because of uh, there just wasn't they just wasn't they weren't able to get this type of cultural revolution, so to speak, uh, of the entire NFT space. 
And I think now what's happening with NFTs, you know, there are film directors coming in, uh, there are people making NFTs about books, uh, and with every different platform coming on, with every different drop coming on, new people are creating MetaMask wallets, and new people are coming on to the space. So I think that it will, it, it's going to be the gateway of a lot of people into Web3, into crypto, and um, Tier Lab, we're personally very happy to be part of that. And to give context for our it's high drop, which was just 99 limited editions, we had a whitelist application process. And in the beginning, you know, we were a bit worried with the whitelist. We weren't sure of how many of Tide's collectors would be interested in collecting a limited edition work from him because, you know, he's only ever done one of ones, uh, one of ones, sorry, in the uh, physical world. But we were really, really shocked by the number of people who applied. It was more than six times uh, the number of people, uh, the number of editions that we had just on the whitelist. And there were so many people emailing us and texting us and just uh, messaging us on Discord about how to set up their MetaMask wallet and what does it mean to own this high work. And I think that's what's so fascinating about the NFT space, you know, with collectors coming in each time around. And to go back to your question, I think ultimately to me, I think it's a technical revolution, but um, ultimately it's the culture that's behind it that's really going to make it long lasting. How do you see the future growth of NFTs as kind of a financial assets and, you know, building either loans or, or any of these other products around it? That's an area that we're definitely the most interested in for NFTs. And so it's, it's, if, if you're buying um, one of these NFTs and you get a receipt, for example, well, is that an expense or is that an asset that's going to generate income? So there's going to be a lot of questions that need to be answered on uh, how NFTs will be classified as, as a financial instrument. But they can definitely um, have, uh, I'd say, a strong place in, in the financial products and the financial ecosystems of decentralized finance, for sure. And that's an area that we're exploring, um, giving more utilities to these, these NFTs, and for sure it's going to have a, a financial kind of you know, aspect to it. What effect does, do NFTs have on kind of the global e economy at, at large? Um, is everything going to be tokenized in our world? So I know that uh, Axis uh doing pretty well in uh, asia and it's almost the lack of uh working power in this country is uh it's like yeah so it's just everyone is uh, making more money out of access rather than go to work so it's kind of heavy <laughs> heavy impact there that's pretty huge uh then yeah it's just um yeah, it's just more ways for creative people to make money, just uh, bigger uh, this kind of content and creation, uh, creative industries, bigger growth, this kind of impact. And um, I don't know if everything will convert into crypto, it's just hard to say.